Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shook. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. And then the hurt child became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. Y'all week been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel like, like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. Okay. Got any parts you'd like to get to know better? Yeah. Change your relationship with? Hmm. I have two thoughts. Um, sorry, one second. I had two thoughts um, during the minute. Um, one is about um, my need for my my need to be cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, always watching myself as if someone else is watching me. Hmm. instead of just being who I am and doing what I want. Yeah. And I understand that people who just do whatever the hell they want are also on another end of the pathological spectrum. <laughs> but, right, right. But I feel like it's a bit much with me. It can consume me in ways I don't enjoy. So there's that. And then there's also just a general, like, wanting to be able to accept sadness and discomfort and not have my managers need to run away from it. Mm -hmm. And that feels maybe like more, more where I want to go, I okay. think, because it feels like so integral to every other part of the work for me. Yeah. Yeah. We can go there. I'm I was curious if these two parts are connected. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they are. Yes. Absolutely. Um there's because there's like every time I feel judged or criticized, um, which is often because mm -hmm. like anyone can say anything that sounds like yeah. slightly off and I'll be like, you know feel feel my defenses come up so uh, -huh. uh clearly i yeah it's hard to sit with the part of me that is that feels judged and feels unworthy hmm. it would be cool to be able to contact that part redefining cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's true all right um so i wonder if now we have three there's feels judged and criticized and unworthy. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that different from want to accept sadness and discomfort? Yes, there's 
<clears throat> there's want to accept sadness and discomfort. That is, I think that's one, that's a part that knows that acceptance is the only way forward and the only way to, to be like authentic and, um, and unpack things that I need to unpack, but it's also like self, I think, and a curiosity that I have and a, a, a desire to like, um, to be at peace, uh, or to find the peace that could, you know, that could be there if I was able to, to make contact. And then there's, yeah, the, the part that feels judged, the exile and the manager that wants to always have a comeback for whoever Mm. is saying something or like, yeah. Yeah. And is the one who wants to have a comeback, is that the same one that needs to be cool? Yes. Got it. Okay. Needs to be cool, protector. Mm-hmm. Ex- uh, figuring out how to accept sadness and discomfort. And then an exile that has some unworthiness feels, especially when judgment criticism comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And which would you like to go to first? Um, I think I'd like to go to the, try to go to the exile and then whoever pops up, we can talk to that part. Great. Okay. Okay. So, excuse me. <clears throat> um, yeah. What's first? I mean, what's so, first in going there? Yeah, well, when I'm in uh, some kind of interaction where I feel disrespected, um, I'm putting up my walls immediately and I'm trying, and my mind is like going and going, trying to um, figure out something to say that will put me back on top in the interaction. And, And so as much as I might want to contact that exile then, I can't because I'm too busy scrambling to defend myself. But I feel like right now, since no one's actively insulting me, uh, (laughs) I, I might be able to, to talk to that sadness and actually reach it and listen to it. Mm -hmm. So I guess, is that, is that protector or any others objecting to that? Um, yeah, I don't get a sense they are. No, I don't think so. I mean, of course, if I step closer and someone pops right. up, then then we'll know. But <laughs> yeah, right. at the moment, my system seems pretty excited about slowing down and getting to figure it out. Great. Yeah. Okay. So. So, are you able to sense, contact, feel? that exile energy Mm. and what's it like it's like um okay so i do notice it's like both it's like both the exile and the protector at the same time that i feel when i think about a situation like um, just somebody saying something thoughtless or kind of rude or mm-hmm. ignoring me, interrupting me. Uh, there is a feeling of like, like um, this person thinks they can just do this to me and there will be no consequences. Like this person thinks they're above me. Mm. Um and that's that is the protector. So I guess right. Um, I guess we need to talk to it. Yeah. So. Okay. How do you notice that one in your body? Um. Hmm. It's like. Hmm. 
Maybe like in my lungs or chest, kind of a, like an exhaustion, desperation, like, like I'm out of breath, but not. All right. I like an impulse to, to move forward and uh go on the offensive hit back yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) and how are you feeling towards it Mm, kind of righteous like yeah yeah fuck that person but also like underneath it a kind of helplessness and desperation like yeah you know Mm mm-hmm uh nothing I can do is is going to put me above this person again because they just said what they said and they don't care. And me trying to calculate how to make them feel bad is just yeah. even more of a testament of my patheticness. <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That sounds to me like the protector's feelings it, yeah. fe- it feels righteous and it and it feels helpless and it's concerned that its efforts make it more pathetic yeah uh yeah. might even be two protectors i don't know might be like okay. i feel like i feel like they argue with each other like hmm. i got to i got to hit back but if i uh, if I do, then I'm just being um, so fussy and I really just shouldn't care at all that this person did this. I should just stop either like like stop caring about the interaction, maybe even stop mm-hmm. caring about them or but 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 it's impossible to actually do that. The most I can do is be like, well, I'm going to ignore them and I'm going to forget them. I'm going to stop being friends with them. But like, that's still an act of trying, decision. Now you're really trying to ignore them, ignore them, ignore yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there's no fixing the fact that I give a shit and giving a shit is like so uncool. <laughs> mm, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that could be two. Mm-hmm. Uh, hitting back and ignoring. Yeah. Yeah. You can just let them know that you see them. Mm. Invite them to notice you. Okay. Is there one that you'd like to speak with first? Between them? Let's see. Maybe the one that wants to stop caring. All right. Mm -hmm. How do you Um, notice that one in your body? mm. Oh. Makes me feel, I don't know, kind of small, but small in like a metaphorical sense. Um, my body is, it's always hard for me to notice how things show up in my body, or a lot of times it's. Hmm. Hmm. Take your time. Feel into it. Mm -hmm. And if it's something too difficult to put into words, that's fine. You can just Mm -hmm. notice that you're noticing it. Mm, That's a good point. Uh, There's a feeling that I've been 
Like I've been revealed. Like everyone can see that I'm pathetic or whatever. Okay. Does that feel like exile energy? It's definitely getting closer to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. It feels like the the one that hits back and then there's the one that's like, stop caring. And then there's the exile. It's like the more, the deeper we go, the more it it gets to like, it it goes from like, I've been disrespected and I'm not going to take it to like, I'm disrespected because I suck and trying to prevent it just makes me look like I suck even more. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I'm, I would, I would be leaning towards staying with protectors until you're sure that they're happy for you to go to that exile. Yeah. Well, I think they, at, at least, like right now, the feeling I'm getting is that um, a lot of parts want me to to go to the exile because because um, they feel that if I could, like if my problem is that I'm too defensive, um, and if that does make me look bad or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, they then, see that it would be helpful. Yeah, then having somebody, like, having the ability to go um, speak to the part that actually feels really unworthy. Because I'm not getting a sense that a lot of my parts do actually believe that I'm unworthy. Hmm. Besides, like, this one, um, they're, they're, I'm, I'm getting a a feeling of like, yeah, if we could just talk to this one that's holding this view for some reason, mm-hmm. then, uh, you know, there's a very okay. good chance that it would change its view. Well, that's good that they they recognize the dynamic. So they want yeah. you to go there. My question yeah. is, do they trust you to go there? Mm. Does the hitting back, for example, does it see self and does it say yeah you're the right person to go do this Mm -hmm. let's see let's see (laughs) well it's really interested in having a greater sense of self-worth because I mean, its position is that I deserve one, of course. And Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of got like strategic reasons for wanting this to happen. Cause it's like, well, if I feel better about myself, then I'll be able to accurately see what's happening in a situation. And if I do need to hit back, the comebacks will be even better. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> which could be which could be entirely true. And you know, yeah. sometimes you need to defend yourself <laughs> and yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. And they'll be more rooted in in actual things that are going on instead of mm-hmm. just the way I'm seeing the situation. And people won't perceive yeah. me as overreacting. Yeah. I'm just looking out <laughs> to make sure this isn't an agenda part or these other protectors mm. parts agendas saying Right. You know, is it is this only just to get the ammo or is this is this about again self is here, self is here to heal. We trust self. Well, there is definitely a desire for ammo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what else there is, I don't I don't know. I mean, I I am curious about the sadness, but um but yeah i mean there's there's certainly plenty of unpure motivation as well but i don't know that it's that like desperate like push to push for a solution kind of agenda mm-hmm. part like it's it's not that one it's the, it's it's the it's a defensive one. It's not, it's not the usual agenda part. 
<laughs> if that makes okay. sense. <laughs> so okay. I don't know well, if that it, helps. I don't know if that makes it safe or what, but that's what's going on. <laughs> it's really, it's your call, your intuition. If you feel like going forward, mm -hmm. that's fine. If, Like you said, if we run into something, we can take a step back. Yeah, I just feel like the, they'll they'll pop up anyway <laughs> if they have a problem. <laughs> right. So <laughs> they always do. Okay. So what do you notice about the one who feels unworthy or says, I suck? Mm. Says people wouldn't be saying mean things to me if I didn't suck. Um, and that other people have this seemingly magical ability to not not care as much about what's said about them. And it just makes me really pathetic and cringy that I do care. How do you feel towards this part? Oh, I feel, I think compassion is the word. Yeah. Compassion and like, you, you like, you, like, damn, that sucks. <laughs> like, um, I feel mm -hmm. like it, yeah, it's, I think it's feeling a little bit comforted by being listened mm -hmm. to. And how about your level of curiosity? Yeah, I'm very curious. Okay. Let it know that. See how it notices you. What is it? What does it see when it looks at you? What does it notice about you? It's not sure how to how to feel about me because I am the I'm the pathetic person that it's sad about being. So it's not sure whether to trust me. Mm. Okay. About yeah. So it feels like it is you. I guess so. It, um, and and it might still be a protector because it it seems to have this view about um, yeah, like it's kind of looking at me and being like, you're you're. Mm. Like maybe you're not that great, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about we get to know that part? Yeah. Whichever one is saying maybe you're not that great. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it's like... Mm. Oh my god. I've got freaking ants on my desk mm. and they're distracting me. <laughs> yeah. Um okay. Do you want to take a moment and Deal with ants and catch your breath or whatever. <sighs> There's nothing I can do about the ants. I I just have to shoo them away when they. I don't know why they're all over the place like this summer, but um, but no. Um, let's see. 
Um, oh my God, hang on. Okay. I was also offering the catch your breath as I just know that in the past we've enjoyed having an extra minute or two of meditation. I'm wondering uh-huh. if now is That's one of those true. times. Yeah, I think that might be good just to, yeah. I feel like I was almost there and then I got distracted by the freaking yeah. ants. So yeah, yeah uh, maybe a couple of minutes. Okay. Two minutes. Sounds starting good. Now. All right. Okay, I'm coming back early because I, I, right. <laughs> I got to the I come back to Great. I'm glad that I'm glad that you have permission to do that. Yeah. Um, so it's like like uh yeah, like maybe you're you're not that great, like this the other people um like other people are are above you, other people are cooler than you. Uh they're uh, if you get into any uh, any sort of disagreement, um, they're probably right, and you're probably being stupid. And I had a, I also had a moment of like, like um, where I think was maybe self, or maybe just another part with a more realistic worldview. But it was just kind of like, wait, but that's that's definitely not right. Like. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I'm not wrong like every single time something happens that would be really weird like yeah <laughs> so right. and that's probably true yeah <laughs> and and let's let's see if we can figure out more about this part that's that's mm-hmm. sounds certain that it is true yeah yeah um and it's not it's not even from the even from the part that feels it's true it's not like an absolute certainty that it's true but it's like a it's probably true we should act as if it's true yeah um how do you feel towards that one um, i feel like it makes a lot of sense like i feel some clarity i guess yeah how so um, I just feel like I'm bringing this part of me out into the daylight, um, where it has, it hasn't seen a lot of sun because <laughs> it's just been in there in panic mode whenever I get into a thing with somebody and it just feels good to have it brought out into the light because the light shows like what really, what it really looks like and what the distort, like what distortions are there. Like, I don't. Like, I don't, I'm not like mad at it. I don't feel like it, ill feelings, like ill will towards it. Like, how's your, I think, level, of, how's your level of curiosity and compassion? Yeah, I, they're, they're high as far as I can tell. All right. Especially the curiosity and the, the compassion, like, um, it's like a, Like it's a, it's just a, a feeling that that it that it all kind of makes some sense, yeah. That what it's saying makes sense, like no, that that um, my problems make sense in light of having a part that feels like this all the time. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, things feel feel good at the moment. Okay. So you could ask this part more about its role. Yeah. What it's hoping to accomplish. Mm-hmm. 
It's... How long it's been doing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, I'm not getting a sense that it is hoping to accomplish anything. It's just that it just feels bad. So it seems like an exile. Um, okay, sounds like it, we've shifted again. Yeah, and it's, it's glad to be, it's glad, like, like I said, it's glad to be brought out into the light. I guess that feeling was coming from the exile itself. Like it's glad to be out here and not in its dungeon where it can mm-hmm. actually see um, that maybe things aren't like the way it thought. Okay. So I'm going to continue trusting your intuition, but if it was <laughs> up to me, if I if I was voting, I would say let's... Let's ask that exile to wait a moment and just finish hearing from this protector that says you're not that great. Hmm. Okay. What's your call? Um, I think I think the exile there's some part that hearing that feels like, oh, you don't want to listen to me. So I think we should just go with the one that really wants to be listened to. I want to let all your parts know that I do want to listen to them. (laughs) Yes. And I want to listen to them as clearly as possible. And that's why I think that if there are protectors with one foot in the room and one foot out, that we need to address that we should address that before. I don't think there are though. I think it was, yeah, it was, uh, there was just one that was halfway, sort of half a, a step in between the the uh, the exile and the top one. But I don't know. It I could be wrong, but it, it's it's looking like they've stepped back. Okay, so you, you're not that great a step back, and is trusting you and happy for you to go meet this exile. Yeah, like I'm, I don't know. I'm just not sensing any objections. Okay. How do you feel towards the exile? Um, I feel like I feel, yeah, benevolent toward it. Um, like it's just, it's been through a lot. And I think it, it, uh, has definitely, earned some uh yeah some be, like being listened to mm. great yeah. let it know that yeah let it know that's all we want to do is listen to it for now just listen to mm-hmm. it understand it Yeah. Yeah. It feels there is yeah, a feeling of being cared about. Mm. Yeah, there's definitely a part that's very glad to have my attention. And what does it want you to know about itself? Mm. Hmm. 
Mm. Or what's it been like for it? Um, the word I'm getting is humiliating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. That makes sense to me. How would you feel about it showing you more, more about that? Great. Yeah. Good. Great. Yeah, it's saying, um, like, I don't know why people hurt me like this, like that. Yeah. But it's not taking over. Mm -hmm. Feels very good for it to express this. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about that statement, you know, why people hurt me. Is it, is it like, why are they like that? Or is it like, why am I like this? Why am I so hurtable? Or is Mm. it, why are people so mean? I think it might be, hmm. let me see. Oh, sorry. Hang on one second again. No problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, It might not be an important question. I was just curious. No, I think it is an important question. And yeah, it's uh, like, why, why do they have to do that? What, what is the purpose? Like, when they know that it's just going to suck, like, like I wouldn't do that to someone else. So why do other people do it to me? I, I do work really hard. Um, and this is probably also like, In addition, like another protector chiming in, not because it's like uncomfortable with the exile, Mm -hmm. but it's, but it's, um, it's seeing itself in this and it's going like, I work so hard to make sure that I don't make anybody else feel bad about themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, and why don't people do the same thing for me? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like why don't why don't people care enough to to watch and make sure that they're not um, So that's what it's been ex- that's what it's been experiencing is mm-hmm. people not caring about it. Yeah. 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 And I guess I want to know now, like, um, like, why does it think people do that? Yeah. Or how how is it for this part mm. when this is going on? You know, like mm-hmm. what's the kind of understanding the mechanism, the way in which it experiences that? Yeah. There's just a sense of like, yeah, there's a very like innocent childlike sort of sense of, Just why, yeah, just why, why would you do that to me? I wasn't doing anything wrong. Or I was trying not to do anything wrong. But yeah, no, it is, it is like, there is like, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was just minding my own business. That that kind of feeling. 
does that childlike energy have an age? I'm getting like mental images of um, being in preschool and Mm -hmm. um, playing with kids in the classroom and, um, you know, just all the drama that can happen in there. There's not like a super specific scene playing out, Mm -hmm. but I guess that's sort of where I discovered people just personalities clashing and mm-hmm. all that and and not being i guess not being the center of mm-hmm. of people's worlds really because i'm yeah. an only child right so with my parents i'm the center of their world and yeah, every and with your sorry, parents yeah. even if there's a mean kid at the playground if your parents are there they're you're still the center of their world and they're looking out for that <laughs> yeah whereas, whereas in the ple- in the preschool classroom it can just happen and nobody notices and nobody <laughs> right that's true that's true yeah it's like why why am i not like what's what's happening like this like this stuff can just happen and then nothing is nothing is done about it Mm-hmm. Because when my parents would upset me, which they certainly would, it was still like they were still thinking about me the entire time they were upsetting mm-hmm. me. Yeah. They were still trying to help or just focusing on me and focusing on how they were treating me. But what I really don't get. I understand someone saying something mean because they're being pointed about it or because I made them mad or something, but I don't understand when people just say whatever. Um, just just because they're, yeah, they're just, they, they're not even, they don't care about preserving any relationship between us. They're just, saying whatever they want and doing whatever they want Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter how I feel about it they're not even thinking about me as like a person and I think that is what really upsets me or really upsets the exile yeah can you are you still seeing it are you still sensing the preschool exile I still do feel a connection with it okay How's that how does that connection feel? Does it feel like a proximity or yeah. anything else? Yeah, it feels like yeah, this whole time that I've been talking about uh people doing the, this or that for no re- like um or for their own selfish reasons that have nothing to do with me, like that that feels very much like kind of the core of what the exile is about. So it feels close, it feels listened to. Like it doesn't it doesn't feel like up in my face close and and like it's not and it's not maybe not like the strongest connection that's ever existed but it's firmly there yeah what does it think about you Mm. your capacity to listen and to be here with it it seems to it seems to appreciate my presence seems to like that i'm interested in in figuring out what's going on with it. Um, Is it, I think it didn't even know what was going on with it. Yeah. It didn't know why it felt sad and now it's getting to put it to words. I would stay with what it's been like for it. Yeah. And understanding it on that emotional level. Mm -hmm. And just letting it know that you really want to get it. You really want to understand it. Okay. It
And I got an image of like wounds, like it's been wounded a lot. It feels like it's cut into all the time, randomly. How does it feel about showing you those? I think it already is, sort of, yeah. Take your time. It's just really, really tiring being knocked around all the time. Mm -hmm. It feels really senseless and like, there's a feeling of like, why do I why do I put up with this? Which sounds like a, a protector. Yeah, maybe. But it's not a, it's not a protector that's really standing in the way. It's just chiming right. in. Yeah. Right. Like why, why, why does it all happen? <laughs> does self have any response to that question we keep hearing? Mm, that's a good question. There's kind of a... Uh, it's hard to put it into words. Yeah, I self just is just feeling sorrow that this... That it's like this. Mm -hmm. I think it's just saying it doesn't really know. I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, just staying with the emotion and yeah, it might not be a question that we can answer or that needs an mm -hmm. answer. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear that. Mm hmm What's your intuition about what's next with this part? Hmm. I think the part the part wants to take in messages from self but doesn't quite know how to. Um, It, yeah, it wants to know how does it how does it get rid of this this feeling like mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah like things are things yeah. are bad and not in like a repression way that's just how it's mm -hmm. phrasing things yeah like how I guess it, it's, it's how, how does it, it un unburden un yeah unburden right yeah. Do you have an answer for that? Mm. <laughs> like, no, I don't, but in a, in a calm way, like, I just don't know yet. Yeah. Well, so you know that there's a handful of different steps that we can do. Yeah. That I, that I do with people to go through an unburdening process. Um, and so we could do those, but also you could just stay with this part in this place. Yeah. And I think that's the answer. Do more of that intuiting around what it really needs. I think, yeah, it just needs to be listened to mm -hmm. until like the, there needs to just be a dialogue between it and self until something happens. Uh, you ever tried unburdening an exile on your own? I have tried it, um, but I don't know how successful it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I 
really did it or if I, yeah, I think it was a little bit forced. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to go with this, staying with it, listening to it. Yeah. Not rushing anything. Right. Brought it out into the light. Yeah. That's sometimes uh, something kind of quick that you could offer is is if it's if it wants to kind of change its environment if it does want to mm. add or subtract or go somewhere else you know to yeah. to meet you later. Mm. Getting the sense that it doesn't want to leave the preschool environment mm -hmm. yet because mm -hmm. it doesn't want to pretend like it never happened. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. They know what they need. Yeah. But you could send it a gift to the preschool or something along <laughs> those lines in yeah. the meantime. Hmm. That's amazing. Um, Or whatever it wants. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't know what it wants, but it enjoys that I'm asking. Mm -hmm. You could also ask it. Go ahead. I guess it just maybe needs to be the, the center of my world so yes. that it can cope with not being the center of everyone else's. That's right. <laughs> Is there anything to negotiate with it about how you might meet it again, when you will do that? Um... Yeah, it's not being very specific. It's just like mm -hmm. uh it, it likes what I'm giving it now. And Um, I obviously want to come back to this. Like, like, I guess maybe the plan can be that next time the, for our next session, we'll come back mm -hmm. to this before I'm we do happy anything to, else. Yep. I'll put that on my notes. Great. Um, and like you said, it, it likes what you're giving it now. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, keep doing what you're doing and, uh, if you do decide to spend more time with it or revisit it before our next call, mm -hmm. you can text me and uh, let me know cool. if you have any questions or want any other guidance around that. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, because I, I I want to uh, I want to speak more to it before our next call, but ju just in case I don't, I want to plan for it Great. to be, yeah. Great. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, anything else that you and I, you want to discuss with me? Um, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. I, I, yeah, it was good. Thank you so much, as always. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon. See you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.
Do you want to help bring more self-energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Ivan, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube. And they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there. And give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.